Today we're going to look at a particularly strange form of matter, literally called strange matter, and it's contagious. It's so stable that all matter in the universe might want to be strange. Let's find out more. Firstly, let's think about matter. What we call normal matter, although we don't even call it normal matter, we just call it matter, is made from atoms. And as I've already mentioned in a number of videos, atoms are made from protons, neutrons and electrons. And even the protons and neutrons are made from smaller particles called quarks. Neutrons are made from one up and two down quarks, and protons are made from two up and one down quark. So all the matter that we can see, and normally associate with the term matter, is made up of just two types of quarks and electrons. So what about the other types of quark? Well, quarks are quite strange things. Firstly, quarks come in different flavours. Yeah, I know, physicists are weird. And there are six flavours. They are up and down, and those are the ones that we're familiar with, but there are others. There are also top and bottom quarks. And finally, we have strange and charm quarks. There are also corresponding anti-quarks for each of the six flavours. And quarks don't like being on their own. They're always found joined together. Hadrons are particles made up from quarks and fall roughly into two groups. Firstly, we have the mesons, and these are formed from a quark and an antiquark pair held together by gluons. And there are lots and lots of different mesons, from the positive pion, made from one up quark and one down antiquark, to the strange D meson, made from a charm quark and a strange antiquark. Mesons are created in high energy interactions, such as those that happen in particle accelerators or in stars as part of cosmic rays. Mesons are also unstable. Some of the lighter ones, made from up and down quarks, are more stable lasting for maybe hundredths of a microsecond. Other heavier mesons are even less stable than that. Heavier mesons decay into lighter mesons, and then eventually decay into electrons, neutrinos, and photons, which are stable. Quarks are also involved in the production of baryons, and these contain three quarks each, again held together by gluons. Most of these are very unstable, and have lifetimes of mere fractions of a second, apart from obviously the two that we know very well, the proton and the neutron, each made from three quarks, held together by gluons. Well, to say that isn't quite true. And quarks are fascinating and a little bit weird. I might make them a video all on their own. Anyway, let's carry on. Protons are immensely stable, with an estimated lifespan of 10 to the 35 years, to put that into context, the age of the universe currently is about 1.3 times 10 to the 10 years, so protons are expected to last for a very long time. Neutrons that are found in the nuclei of atoms are also stable, but free neutrons have a half-life of about 879 seconds, that's about 15 minutes. They decay when one of their down quarks undergoes weak nuclear decay and turns into an up quark. The neutron then becomes a proton, ejecting an electron and an antineutrino. So that's the different types of quarks and some of the particles that they can form. So what has this got to do with strange matter? Well, strange matter happens to be made from strange quarks. But I've already said that particles that are formed from any quarks that aren't up or down are very unstable and don't last for very long. Particles that have strange quarks as one of their constituents are generally very unstable. The kaon, the strange D meson and the strange B meson, all particles that include strange quarks or antiquarks, have lifespans that are fractions of a second. In fact, the strange quark got its name from a particular property that it has. In the early days of particle physics research, physicists found lots of particles with very brief lifetimes. Some other particles lasted for longer than expected, and this property was quite strange. Later they discovered that the common particle to all the other particles that live for longer than expected was in fact the soon to be named strange quark. Even so, these particles as we've already seen only lasted for tiny fractions of a second. 
It seems then that strange matter isn't something that can exist in our universe for any length of time. Well that's not quite true, but in order to explore further we do need to pay another visit to one of the most extreme places in the known universe. Yes, we're going back to a neutron star. Don't worry, I've got my time and space machine, and after it got a bit beat up when we visited that magnetar, I've given it a paint job and I think it looks amazing. And look, we've already arrived at a neutron star. On the inside of neutron stars, the protons and electrons that make up the atoms are squashed together by the immense force of gravity to produce neutrons. As we move down through the star towards the core at the centre, the pressure of gravity squashes the neutrons closer and closer together. We don't really know what it's like at the centre of a neutron star, but in some models even the neutrons are broken apart into their constituent quarks. These quarks are normally bound together into the particles we mentioned before, but under the intense pressure inside a neutron star, it may be possible for the quarks to break apart and become a super dense soup of quarks all sloshing around. If this happens, because the star is then formed mainly of quarks separated from each other, we call this a quark star. And these are actually really, really similar to neutron stars, just a little smaller. Inside these quark stars, and under intense conditions, some of the up quarks can change their flavour and become strange quarks. Particles containing strange quarks are usually unstable, but the strange quarks here are not confined within particles. Under these conditions, the strange quarks are stable. Very stable, in fact. This would form new strange particles made from one up quark, one down quark, and one strange quark. In fact, these particles are known as lambda hyperons, and is one form of strange matter that could form at the heart of a neutron star. This new type of matter will be perfectly dense, perfectly stable, and indestructible. A new kind of matter. Strange matter. In fact, so stable is this type of strange matter, and so dense, that collisions of this matter and normal matter would rip apart the protons and neutrons that make up the normal matter, turning it into more strange matter. This strange matter then seems to be infectious and would spread and overwhelm the normal matter until only strange matter remained. So, with the strange matter safely contained within the strange stars, it would appear that we would be quite safe from these universal levels of strangeness. Well, that might not be quite the case. Even though neutron stars are stable with huge gravity wells, they sometimes exist in binary pairs. Binary pairs of stars are quite common across the universe. This then leads to the reasonable possibility that two stars in a binary pair could both become neutron stars. This could then lead to the possibility that the neutron stars could collide. This merger would result in an explosion similar to a supernova, called a kilonova, and this would eject the strange matter in small fragments, called strangelets. Strangelets could range in size, with the smallest being just a few femtometers across, and larger strangelets could be anything up to several meters across. However, above this point, they would then be termed strange stars themselves. These strangelets would then drift across space, it's thought that if a strangelet ever came into contact with another star or planet, then the stability of the strange matter would transform the other celestial body into strange matter, like an infection spreading through a population. This could then lead to strange stars and strange planets dotted across the cosmos, frightening reminders of the power of strange matter. It's possible that strangelets are responsible for at least some of the dark matter in the universe, it being very dense and heavy. So, is that yet another galactic terror for us to worry about? Well, not really, for a number of reasons. Firstly, physicists aren't even certain of the existence of strange matter, although the models suggest that it should exist, and we've found a number of candidate stars and potentially planets that may be made from strange matter. Secondly, strange matter may only be stable under the extreme conditions found inside neutron stars. Once released, the strangelets may decay like other matter-containing strange quarks. 
Another problem with this strange matter hypothesis is that most of the matter on Earth was formed in supernova explosions. Most of the atoms in your hand were produced during the end stages in the life of a massive star. Recent research suggests that heavier elements were produced in one of two ways. Gold and heavy elements such as that seem to be produced either in neutron star collisions or a collision between a black hole and a neutron star. If a neutron star collision produced most of the gold on Earth, then it should also have spewed out at the same time strange lits. Another way that gold may have been produced is when a neutron star collides with a black hole. I'm sure it's no surprise for me to tell you that the black hole will win, but as the neutron star spirals towards its doom, it will be ripped apart by the black hole, spewing out its contents. Some of the gold that we find on this planet may have been born in such a cataclysmic event. If then there is some gold here on Earth, shouldn't there also be strangelets? Maybe it is the case that the strange matter isn't as stable as we might think. Or maybe strange matter is destroyed in the collision. Maybe strange matter can only be maintained as stable when in the extreme conditions within a neutron star. Finally, to question this strange matter hypothesis, is the idea that strange matter is all around us, all the time here on Earth anyway. A neutron is made from three quarks, one up and two down. But that's just overall. Neutrons may contain many, many quarks and antiquarks produced for short periods by quantum fluctuations. And they just contain one additional up quark and two additional down quarks. These quarks popping into and out of existence would also include strange quarks. But these don't seem to be stable and don't convert the neutrons into strange matter. So maybe it is true that strange matter is only stable within the heart of stars. I'm finishing my journey here in the far future. I'm actually in Ganymede City, enjoying the view. I was asked to say hello to Bumble and Simba, and so seeing as they asked very nicely, I've come here to do that. I think I'll spend a bit of time here and have a think about my next video. But for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.